Uh, thank you very much. Uh, in this talk, basically, this is the summary of my talk. Uh, all through my life, I've been thinking about what determines behavior, what are the uh, regulator, regulators of behavior, human, animal. We can briefly talk about these four stages, pre-programmed behavior, learning, conditioning, development of sense of self, and consciousness. Uh, the other way of talking about this, uh, behavior is regulated for the simple organisms by receptors, for more complex organisms, representations, for even more complex beings like humans with the concept of self. I call all these three types of behavior regulation mechanical existence, which can be eliminated by understanding where we can switch to aware existence. This is what I think. Okay, let's start with the first one. Let's think about mosquitoes. We all know, we think we know that what is right and what is wrong. The same is true for all animals. They must show the right response in order to survive. But the question is, how do they know what is the right response? Again, mosquitoes, you know, they develop after four stages, starting from the egg to pupa, and they become an adult version. And when an adult mosquito, just newborn, and a mosquito which is about to die, if you look at them, you can't find the difference, the new one and the old one. They are the same, they will show the same responses, because most of their responses will be controlled by biological programming pre-programmed behavior, we call it instincts, or more specific names can be said, like taxis, kinesis, modal action patterns. They know exactly what to do. For example, a mosquito knows how to suck a blood from a vertebrate. Nobody teaches them. The life story of each mosquito is actually an isolation story. They never see their mothers and fathers. You never see a mother mosquito and the father mosquito teaching their child this is how you are going to suck blood from a human being. When they are born, they know that complicated process very well, with almost no mistake. When we come to more complex organisms, it's like a quail. I have been conducting experiments on quail behavior for the last 20 years. Apart from biological programming, then learning starts. Of course, for mosquitoes, some level of learning is still uh, operative. But for those more complex organisms like birds and mammalians, in addition to instinctive response, we talk about learning. Then the, with learning, there is a problem of wrong learning. For example, mosquitoes, they don't have that problem of wrong learning. They know everything from the beginning. But mammalians, and birds, they learn more, and they can learn wrong things. OK, now, in the experimental chamber, do you see that a white area? And underneath that box, there's a terricloth, three-dimensional object. That is the conditional stimulus. And the subject is behind the box, is uh, staying there, and the door is opening to a female cage. So this is a sexual condition experiment. Exposure of the uh, terricloth object by lifting the box up for 30 seconds will lead to the presentation of female. Now, this is the first trial. So the male subjects show no interest with totally arbitrary stimulus. It has no significance. So we can go to the next slide. After repeated trials, now, in this test trial, after inside the box there are two objects, terricloth object and the female. But the terricloth object was always predicting the female. Now look what is happening. Male is preferring to show sexual response to terricloth in the presence of the female. Terricloth was actually a sign 
a cue, a symbol for the presentation of the male. For 30 days, then the male starts to show sexual response to the pterygloid. Then when we give a test trial, the male animal prefers the pterygloid over the live female. So it's one of the examples of what I call wrong learning. So why I call it learn? It's going to spend all of his time and energy running after the uh, pterygloid object. Okay, what is happening, there is a cue which is signaling the biologically significant event. Q is the blue three-dimensional three object. Biologically significant event is the actual female. So after repeated presentation of the cue with the biologically significant event, biologically significant, in the absence of the biologically significant event, Q acquires the capacity to excite the organism. Moreover, it takes on the role of the biologically significant event, the female. So the animals start to treat the arbitrary stimulus as if it is the female. So significant when we come to humans, we have much more complicated network, network of representations. Um, if you go back to this one, that blue object, Q, becomes an object of excitation as a result of pairing. So the organism starts to represent the relationship between environmental events in his mind. So in humans, that representational capacity is much, much more complex. That network is very, very sophisticated. We have much higher learning capacity. So when we are born like this, a baby, as a result of our classical conditioning history, we can be turned into a, this person or another person as a result of classical conditioning. What kinds of cues and symbols will be activating what kinds of emotions and responses? That is what we call learning. We have very complex representation formation capacity and in addition to this, there's a sense of self. That means internalization of those representation capacities. Internalization of those cues, signs, and symbols. And potential for understanding of the first and the second. This is what I think, what makes us uniquely human. So with very complex representation formation capacity, symbolic internal world replaces the external world. Rather than showing emotions to the biologically significant events, we start to show strong emotions, powerful emotions to the symbols, signs, and cues. And we start to treat them as real. So I think that representations are activating emotions. Our emotions are defining reality for us, unfortunately. So what happens, so our current life actually, we are living the emotions elicited by representations in our mind and they become our reality. We live a representation reality rather than real reality. And we call that representation reality the reality itself. So in this mechanical, what I call mechanical, non-conscious, non-reflective, non-aware existence, emotions are regulated by classical conditions and emotions define reality. Together with this, there is the concept of self, what I understand, awareness of its own existence. When that awareness of its own existence starts, we try to find uh, meaning of life. And with that, with the development of sense of self, we start to redefine what is right and what is wrong for us. Rather than rejecting the evolutionary definitions coming from our instincts and our genes, we try to define right and wrong through our experience, through our newly developed sense of self with our own existence. But how do we know what is right and what is wrong? Through classical conditioning. 
through signs and symbols. The sense of self, which means to me a internalized representational world, language, ideology, culture, and belief systems. These are all network of internalized representations. We use them to define our reality, which are also regulating our emotions. So, basically, either we will be working, behaving according to our biological impulses. On top of it, there is classical conditioning and representation formation. And self, self means internalized representations. Therefore, whenever somebody says something against our ideology or belief system, we get very angry. Even though it's a symbolic, we feel that our self is inhaliating, disappearing, because self is made up of representations. But we can be aware of this through capacity for mental reflection. By mental reflection, by thinking our, over our own emotions. When a cue or a sign or a symbol activates strong emotion in us, it becomes our reality. We cannot say, this is just a sign or a symbol. We say, I feel very bad, and that's it. But for more developed, more conscious existence, organisms have the capacity to reflect on that emotion, to evaluate it, to criticize, self-criticism. And that is, unfortunately, very painful. Because all the things that you think are right and wrong are, uh, and absolutistic can actually be relativistic. But we enjoy living in an absolutistic world. We think that if a sign or a symbol, which are internalized by us, then associated with strong emotion, that is our reality. And reflecting over it is very painful. That means our primary attachment will be questioned, and what we thought as correct may, uh, can be wrong, actually. So from more uh, absolutistic reality, moving to more uh, relativistic reality, which is difficult. Therefore, we cling to our own representation. More we feel insecure, more we cling to representation. Only in a loving, caring environment, where we feel accepted and secure, we will feel the courage and power to go over our representational world and to see what is real and what is representation. If we feel understood, then we start understanding ourselves and others. If we feel threatened, then we cling to the representational world more. That means a world which is not actually real, but treated as a real. Uh, to summarize what I've tried to say, I think there's biologically regulated rules reg regulating behavior, and then learning based on biology, which is classical conditioning, basically, and observational conditioning. Then we talk, go to psychology. By psychology, I mean we create a second system over the self. Therefore, for example, when we see a behavior, pathological behavior in a mosquito, we cannot call it psychological. It's a genetical. Whenever we use the word psych, we are referring to self, a second unit, a representational unit. Then consciousness. Consciousness meaning understanding, awareness, representations separated from reality, as I said, which is very, very difficult. So in a way, first, we are s organisms are slave to their receptors, like mosquito. Whenever a stimulus comes, it responds. Then we become slaves of our representations in our mind, in classical conditioning, in more sophisticated form. Then there's slavery of the self. Then if we can overcome, this is the most difficult one, I think, this, to overcome the slavery of the self. Then if we can overcome this, we can overcome mechanical existence and move to aware existence with understanding, if possible. Thank you.